All right, people, let's go ahead and now revise the chart of TDS. Everyone, TDS as a chapter is TDS and TCS are B graded chapter. Three to four marks is maximum which you can go ahead and expect in the exam. Let's take a quick linking. We started learning GST with goods and service. Goods and service has to be supplied. Supply can be either interstate or intrastate. Inter or intra GST will be levied. Once GST is levied, it has to be collected and paid by a taxable person. He will go ahead and calculate GST is equal to value of supply into rate of tax. Once you know the value, you will prepare the tax invoice, credit note and debit note. Now what will you do? Accounts. You will go ahead and maintain your accounts and you will send the goods to the other person with the help of a eBay bill. Now sir, the liability to pay will come. It comes at the time of supply. You will go ahead and use your input tax credit. Remaining amount, you will go ahead and make the payment. Everyone listen to me very carefully. When you learn the chapter of payment of taxes, in payment of taxes, you have e cash ledger, e credit ledger, e liability ledger. In the payment of taxes, e cash ledger may only TDS and TCS is being credited. So here comes the linking. We are going to learn about TDS and TCS. Remember one thing, TDS, TDS which is there is under section number 51 and TCS which is there is under section number 52. 51 may always it is 2% which is 1% CGST, 1% GST. Here 2 may it is always 1% that is 0.5% and 0.5%. Now everyone over here, whenever there is a supplier who is going in and supplying to the government department, if number 1 the value of supply is greater than 2.5 lakh excluding the GST amount and relating to taxable supply of goods and service taxable supply of goods and service then you will have to go ahead and who oh, that recipient that is the deductor deductor has to go ahead and deduct TDS everyone for an example 3 lakh rupees plus 18 percent GST so you will go ahead and see the invoice as 3 lakh plus 27,000 27,000 3 lakh 54,000 always remember the department, government department being the recipient of goods and service, government has gone ahead and told government department, I want to go ahead and trace these people who are supplying to the government department, hence government department has to go ahead and deduct TES and give it to the government. So what will the government department do? First of all, they will take compulsory registration either TAN based or PAN based and it's a separate registration which is to be taken. If they are normally registered, normally registered, okay, but they will have to take separate registration as a TDS deductor they will have to deduct only on the value always remember they will deduct tds only on the value which is value total invoice value minus gst one percent cgst if in the invoice cgst and hgst is charged on the value also one percent cgst one percent hgst will be charged if uh, on the invoice igst is charged then three lakh pay two percent igst will be deducted sir that is six thousand will be deducted and remaining amount will be paid to the supplier that is over here 2 lakh 94 per 54,000 3 lakh 48,000 now this supplier will go ahead and tell where is my remaining 6,000 so government will do what the government department will go ahead and pay this 6,000 to the government by chalan government department co when government department when it makes the payment it has to also go ahead and file a return which is GSTR 7 by what date by 10th of the next month and one TDS certificate will be made available to the deductee. Now, this 6,000 rupees will come to the deductee. Deductee will have to go ahead and validate and the amount will be credited to his e-cash ledger and he can also go ahead and claim a refund of the amount under section number 54. Are we clear everyone? Now, TDS certificate also will be made available to the to the deductee by the government on his common portal. Sir, always remember in GSTR 7, the certificate will be made available. Means the certificate is GSTR 7A. Sir, if I don't go ahead and deposit the TDS on time, always remember late deposit means interest and if you file the return late, late return means late fee of rupees 25 per day under CGST, 25 under SGST, up to a maximum of 1000 under CGST, 1000 under SGST. Now, sir, if I don't go ahead and deduct or pay, Baba, default in deduction or payment means you have gone ahead and defaulted and they will go ahead. In case of default, they will give you a demand order under section number 73 or 74. Basically, they will de de demand the tax, interest, penalty. Penalty can be 10,000 or TDS amount, whichever is higher under CGST, TDS amount or 10,000, whichever is higher under SGST also. 
deduction sir when do i have to deduct a government department has to deduct on payment or credit whichever is earlier it means if they are paying an advance they will have to go ahead and deduct tds on advance also sir who are these people who have to go ahead and deduct always remember tds deductors are of four category number one is department of central government state government or local authority or governmental agency or person who is notified by the government on the recommendation of council and this is the d category which is the notified category notified category is notification has been issued notification number 50 bar 2018 and notification number 57 bar 2017 if you are an authority board or any other body which is set up under an act of the parliament or state legislature or you are established by the government and in any one of them equity or control greater than 51 percent is with the government then baba you are also being an authority board or any other body you will have to go ahead and deduct tds or if your society established by the government central government state government local authority under the society's registration act or you are a public sector undertaking then also you are required to deduct tds always remember tds has to be deducted by whom department of central government state government local authority governmental agency or notified category notified category is authority board or any other body established by the act of parliament or state legislature or established by the government with any one of them may equity or control greater than 51 percent is with the government or your society registered under the society registration act which is basically society formed by the government baba central government state government local authority or it's a public sector undertaking then also your notified category liable to deduct tds right everyone always remember one thing if a b c d category are supplying among each other then baba tds provisions are not applicable ministry of defense is a government central government department but they will also not go ahead and deduct tds local authority always means panchayat municipality zilla parishad uh, all these people are known as local authority sir always remember one thing no tds where are what is the scenario when tds will not be there sir if supplier and place of supply are in the same state and recipient is in other state in that scenario tds is not required if supply is in one state place of supply and recipient is in other state then in that scenario tds will be deducted igst will be charged and tds will be deducted same state cgst sgst will be charged recipient also in same state place of supply in same state cgst sgst he will deduct to oh, one percent cgst one percent sgst supplier and place of supply in one state recipient is in other state no tds supplier in one state place of supply and recipient both are in other state in that scenario igst will charge two percent igst will be deducted always remember no tds if supplier and place of supplier in one state it is different different it is in different state from that of the recipient are we clear transaction is out of scope sale of land and building pay there will be no tds basically any schedule three ka item where basically any section number seven to 7 section number 7 to a or b ka item which is neither supply of goods nor supply of service there will be no tds sir transaction nil related wholly exempt non-taxable supply no tds transaction where total amount is payable under rcm government is selling in that scenario also no tds transaction is made payment is made to unregistered supplier government department is paying to an unregistered supplier if they deduct tds i am unregistered how will i get the credit so hence baba in that scenario tds is not required tds is not required when payment relates to a tax invoice which was issued before 1 10 2018 because the provisions of tds only were effective from 1 10 2018 then no tds on advance before 1 10 2018 but invoice might be issued after but to the extent the advance was given before 1 10 2018 because tds had to be deducted on advance but that time provisions were not effective so on that advance also tds is not required to be deducted i hope everyone is clear always remember one thing if in case of supply under a contract if government department ke you have a contract where the contract value is greater than 2.5 lakh in that scenario tds will come on every invoice even if the value per invoice might be value of supply might be less than 2.5 lakh then tds now on every single invoice single invoice then now tds will be done now single invoice value shall not matter so if government department kisat you have a contract where the amount is greater than contract value is greater than 2.5 lakh then in that scenario government department now will go ahead and deduct tds on every advance payment on every payment or credit whichever is earlier basically right everyone is now always see contract value for determining tds or no tds but you always have to go ahead and deduct on baba you can go ahead and say simply payment or credit whichever is earlier i hope everyone is clear
can we go ahead everyone yes sir we are all clear listen to me very carefully for your exam one question can be they will go ahead and tell you contract values they will tell you payment amounts so you will always have to deduct on the payment or credit amounts which are there secondly who are the people who are liable to deduct tds that is also very important thirdly who are the people who are not liable to deduct the, what are the cases when tds is not to be deducted that is also very important right everyone one thing which i want to go ahead and tell you always remember one thing if gta is there goods transport agency gta is going ahead and giving services to a tds deductor with department of central government state government local authority right everyone in that scenario rcm is not applicable because they are registered as tds deductor rcm is not applicable but if gta is giving services to department of central government state government local authority and they are registered normal registration not tds deductor in that scenario rcm is there you just have to remember this point i thought i'll tell it to you i hope you guys remember if they are giving to these people and they are registered as tds deductor then rcm is not there but if they are normally registered then tds then sorry Baba, if they are uh, GTA is giving services to department of central government, state government, local authority who are registered as TDS deductor, then RCM is not there. It is exempted. But otherwise, RCM is there if they have taken normal registration. I will go ahead and close my revision on the chapter of TDS over here. Congratulations, people. Done, everyone.